everyone, it's your girl Maddie here, aka Beaver Mosh, here today to talk to you about clandestine thergy from the Winnipeg, Manitoba based band Nocturnal Departure. This one comes off of Hell's Headbanger Records. Oh, oh my, woof. This clandestine thergy is the third studio album from these very to the point black metalers. And I would say nocturnal departure fashions themselves as sort of black metal traditionalist in a way this album really screams production wise and soundcraft and just overall the way it's packaged it, it really screams at 90s second wave underground sound and approach. But this doesn't mean that Nocturnal Departure are strict revivalist. Or that they are plain black metal by the numbers. They very much are not doing that. If that was the case, I, spoiler alert, would not be so, so high as I am on this record. Oh my, I, spoiler alert, I like this album a lot. And, and while keeping a very scathing and blasphemous approach to their black metal sound, the band does find ways to incorporate a lot of atmosphere and ferocity and even some dark melodicism simultaneously all of those components at the same time while weaving their hellish ideas into your bones the first track here ceremonial storm wastes no time with these racing frozen riffs you have some monstrous drum patterns here. The vocals switch between these unholy shrieks and these cursed menacing growls. The way they are recorded, very gritty and, and lo-fi, make the sounds coming from this person's mouth even more frightening. You get this storm summoning solo in the middle that works really well. Production wise, the thing is just nasty, raw, and it only further fuels the onslaught more. This is one of those, <laughs> as cliche as it might say, this is one of those black metal albums that would sound worse and feel tainted if it sounded better to say. This thing needs to sound as gritty and unpolished as it does. On the next track, Dark Spells of the Infernal spirit 
it's carried more by these kind of twisting tremolos. Also works in some of these sawing, like cave digging crawls into the mix. And I love how the vocalist interjects themselves at certain opportune times with these unholy, like werewolf-like howls into the night. It's super harrowing and scary and just pure hell unleashed from the vocalists. This band does the whole kind of corpse paint posing with swords and spikes in a wintry photo in the forest. But when this band does that, it doesn't feel like a gimmick. It, it doesn't feel like some simple marketing exercise. No, I, I kind of actually believe them when they present themselves in this way. The title track here is a very more atmospheric cut. You get these somber, sort of ritualistic, dark arpeggios from the guitar and these tin can sounding snares that add to it. They're going to give you nightmares. They are definitely going to do that 100% assured, I promise you, guaranteed. Unhallowed exhumation. You get this corroding, chaotic energy attached to this one. It goes from these very skyward, melancholic leads to these punching, punishing, dirge-like riffs effortlessly as it transitions back and forth. The vocals here feel legitimately scathed and demented. And I love how they kind of, at times, match the pacing of the more bass-heavy runs throughout this track. Triumphator of Unearthly Realms starts with a more brooding, slow paced sort of ceremony going on. The guitars play these minor key arpeggios that effortlessly feel evil and, and utterly unholy. It's just pure fucking black metal here. It's a mid-paced cut that doesn't kill the pacing or the momentum of the record at all. No, it's only here to allow the rot to fully fester further and develop so that it is more present on the second half of this LP. Fed it manifestations of wretched imagery. You get these jerking, erratic, pattern from the guitars and the drums. It, it's such a ride to try to follow along with, and they're paired with these absolutely unleashed, menacing howls from the vocalists. There's also this very interesting sort of delay effect on some of the guitar leads here. It, it makes the atmosphere that much more intoxicating to experience the track sacrificial summoning under the sign of hamducius i love these song titles so much they're just so good and this is another very atmospheric heavy forward cut here the bass and the guitars Instead of kind of playing these like discernible melodies or riffs, instead kind of melt together and concoct this fog together, this like hallucinating sort of wall that sort of cloaks over you and just kind of cooks and 
develops throughout the track runtime. And while they do that, the drums are there to give it a frenetic energy to it. So it's not just kind of this baking haze. You know, the track has some forward energy to it. And the vocals here. The vocals on this whole thing, god damn, they're so good. The vocals are a real selling point. They're just fantastic and really believable and convincing. On Sabbath Ablaze, the band's melodic sense really is put on full display here. You get these grim, slithering, and melancholic lines that kind of drift all over this one and really bring forth an excellent sense of moodiness that this track particularly possesses. And some of the drum fills, the, the drummer needs to be commended on this album, really adds some real electricity to this cut. Flesh Torment is an excellent way to close this track out. I love the galloping nature of this track. The drums do these really compelling kind of skipping grooves throughout the cut. And you get some more methodical and meditative passage with these very mystifying arpeggios from the guitars. There is not a single boring or dialed in moment on this record. It all feels vital. It all feels well crafted. And it all, I love every fucking moment of this thing. This, there are no posers here. This is true cult black metal with a V. It's for people who are big fans of that very classic kind of foundational black metal approach, but want to find bands that have their own lane and identity throughout that sound. There's just these memorable riffs, these vocals that are delivered with so much rotting intensity, just solid song craft, some subtle melodicism, the evilness that they want to present. It's, 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 I, I feel it like it, they really sell it. And there's just this exceptional use of atmosphere. I'm not someone who gives scores to records, but with saying that, I want to give you my highest recommendation I possibly can. If you love black metal, what are you doing? Go listen to this record. God damn, please listen to this record. I, I love, love, love this record. They say that records that come out at the end of December get forgotten. I am going to make sure that doesn't happen. Like I said, go listen to Nocturnal Departure. I am, please, I'm begging you. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. It helps get the video out there. It would mean the world to me if you would hit subscribe. It's another way this channel really grows. I love interacting with the comments. I would super appreciate hearing what you think. I have a Twitter you can follow. Link to that is in the bio of this YouTube channel. What can I say? Keep it metal. Listen to this record. My name is Maddie, aka Beaver Mosh. Listen to Nocturnal Departure. And I'm signing off. Listen to this record.